Hello amateurs, welcome to another episode of the Amateur Rugby Podcast, here to help soothe your Sunday morning hangover with some wonderful rugby chats about the grassroots of the game. I'm your host Tim and I've got another fantastic guest for you today. This man and I actually have quite a lot in common. He's a fellow front rower, he's played for England and he's coached in Africa. Please welcome Mr Dave Pattimore. Dave, how are you? All good, thank you. All good. All good. Welcome to the show. Let's get started with the most important thing in rugby, and that is the front row. So tell me about yourself as a front rower. All the good stuff, like how long have you been doing it? What type of player are you? Yeah, um, the front row, uh, probably like maybe uh, half of the front row that play there stumbled into that position. Um, I think you either made for it or you stumble into it, don't you? So, um, I mean, for, from my point of view, uh, started life as a, as a 15, couldn't be much further away in all fairness. Um, but uh, uh, ended up at um, tight head, loose head and then hooker. So, yeah, gradually made my way forward across the pitch. Amazing. So you played it all the way across the front row, which was which was your favourite? Did you have a favourite? Yeah, hooker. Hooker's a favourite one. Yeah, uh, definitely. Not big enough for um, tight head. Um, yeah, not crazy enough for loose head, but uh, just about crazy enough for a hooker, yeah. I was going to say, that's probably the craziest of them all, to be honest. And what about, yeah. what about the throwing in? Was that something that you had to really work at? Um, yeah, obviously, like yeah, like everything, throw, throwing in big part of the front row, big part of hooking, obviously. Um, yeah, yeah, a bit, bit of graft on that. Um, probably the old age creeping in now, um, still still playing, just holding on, holding on to the, my playing with my fingertips. Um, probably my fault rather than anything else, uh, just not keeping fit. But, um, but yes, yeah, having to work a little bit harder at the throwing in nowadays, it uh, doesn't come as natural as it used to, shall we say. That's an interesting topic about the kind of, clinging on to playing there's a bit of me that wishes I carried on playing a little bit and I'm potentially looking at getting into playing some real social rugby in the coming years tell me about that feeling that you're feeling at the moment in terms of you know like just clinging on maybe one more season that kind of feel yeah probably the reverse view is a bit of me saying I probably shouldn't be playing anymore (laughs) um so uh, there's a bit of a reverse thing going on there but um it's an addiction, isn't it? Let's be honest. You, you, you can't leave it. It's always there. It's it's always something that needs scratching, uh, an itch that needs scratching. So, um, I actually got a game tomorrow, which I'm I'm should be looking forward to, shouldn't I? But it's a bit early for vets rugby, isn't it? The ground. Um, but yeah, no. Um, yeah, hanging in. Um, still, still want to do a bit. Still think I can do a bit. I think that's the main thing, isn't it? If you think you can do it, then why not? Then why not keep having a go? Uh, keeps me young as well. So. Um, Try and keep up with the young pups at training and what have you, and also as well when you're telling them to do something, if you if you if you're actually doing it, it comes across a little bit better and they're more inclined to um to accept uh, the beasting. I think if they know that you've done it, hundred percent. That's definitely true. Now then, let's talk about the international honours. I was lucky enough to play for England Firefighters. Which England team did you play for, Dave? And tell me tell me all about it. Yep. Yeah, so. Um, you know, more than fortunate, so lucky to play for the England Police uh, national team. Obviously, um, yeah, cr- a crazy situation, really. So the t- the police, the England Police team's only been running for um, probably just coming up ten years. I think we've got a ten year anniversary next year. Um, so yeah, so it's been running for ten years. Before that, there was just the the GB team, uh, the British Police team, um, which, in all fairness, is is a is a very high standard. And they sort of recruit on your CV, really, or uh, what um, you've done in your past. So um, the England team, which was um, created by a gent out my way, West Yorkshire way. Um, I'm from South Yorkshire, but uh, West Yorkshire way, uh, called Pete Oram. Uh, and he um, basically thought there's, a, there's, an, there's, an, there's an opportunity here to create an England police team, uh, which he did uh, with, with, a, with the help of a couple of others. And I was fortunate to go on the first ever trial for that. Uh, which which was a trial uh, and it was uh, open to uh, anyone really. Um, you had to be put forward by your section, your policing section from your force. Um, and I went on that trial and uh, had a bit of a purple a purple session, shall we say? Yeah, a bit of a uh, a bit of a good trial. Uh, did quite well uh, and managed to uh, get into that um, into that first squad. Really, uh, I think the first game I I, I didn't play was uh, Australia um, down in the Met area. But I, I was injured for that one, unfortunately. But uh, and then got in for the the, the games following that, um, and and absolutely loved it. 
Um, as, as you well know, it's a special thing, isn't it? Whatever, whatever, whenever you're wearing your, your uh, country's badge, it's, it's very special, really. Yeah, that's really interesting about it being such a, a new team. I was fully aware that, you know, the GB police team existed. Um, so who else do you play against? Do you play against, obviously, the other home nations? And is it other teams as well? Yeah, yeah. So um, it's just been given some, um, uh, well, I suppose what I'm trying to think what the word is really, but um, it's now it's now come under the, the police service um, uh, cup, if you like. It's, it comes under the, um, it's, it's got some official sort of um, branding around it now. But prior to that, it was just ourselves organising games uh, amongst amongst other countries. So obviously there's there's the four, um, in, in, and obviously in the UK and Britain, so obviously ourselves, Wales, Scotland and Ireland, and it's a combined Ireland team as well. Um, but then, yeah, last season was the first ever um, inaugural uh, PSUK uh, Four Nations Cup. Um, so that that was quite special. So actually playing for a cup as a, as opposed to just the uh, just the pride of it really. But that's the main thing, obviously. Just playing playing for the pride is, is more important than anything else. But uh, always nice to lift, lift a trophy, isn't it? At the end of a a, a hard competition. Um, so yeah, so that was the first the first year um, of, of that cup. But uh, we normally play against um, other sort of um, forces, if you like. So uh, as you well know, we played against the fire the fire service, the England fire service. Um, uh, that that we started playing against them when we first started. That game sort of dropped off a little bit, but um, we've now picked that back up again. Last year we played them uh, again for the first time in a few years, which is a, a really hard hard fought victory for us. Uh, I'll get that in there, hard fought <laughs> victory. <laughs> um, but um, but yeah, no, no, that and that was a pleasure. That was played at six ways at Worcester, um, so that was an an amazing um, you know event to play or to be involved in. Really, that one. Um, but yeah, uh, we probably we probably have about for probably probably five or six um, games a season really. Um, so it's not that many, but uh, obviously you've got to fit them around um, your club your club games. They're generally midweek, uh, Wednesday, Wednesday days, um, and obviously fit them around your force games as well. That's a really it's good quite a lot, really. The, um, the the playing arenas because the the games that I played in were played at really good grounds as well. So you know you get that sort of chest out pride of playing for your country but then you get that also sort of that really excellent experience of playing somewhere you might not have played otherwise yeah definitely definitely and, and six ways was a, a tremendous experience I, obviously i didn't play in that one um on the coaching team for that now uh, for, for england now uh, or, or kit man um a water boy top top uh, water boy at the moment <laughs> but um but yeah it's, it's great still to be involved in all fairness um and, and just to have that input and, and just to be around the england set is, is still brilliant and i'm still lucky to be uh, to have that opportunity to do that in all fairness as well but um but yeah the stadiums we played at um, newcastle's ground uh, newcastle falcons ground um we've played at um yeah ver- various d- decent grounds actually for, throughout the years we've also played at some some very basic places um <laughs> The Welsh, for example, like to put us on a bit of a, a bit of a cabbage patch now and again, uh, just to slow us down a bit. But um, no, nah, that's all good. Yeah, we played at some cracking locations, and again, locations that certainly someone like myself wouldn't have the opportunity to play in normally. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing experiences, really. Cool. Now I've played played against quite a number of different police teams over the years, and I think it's fair to say that there's always kind of you always felt that you're going to be in for a tough game, like quite an unforgiving nature against police teams. Is that still the case? Is it something that you're kind of aware of? Is it, aware of? Is it something you kind of revel in, if so? Um, I, I don't think it's quite the case as it was. So I've, I've been playing police rugby now for, um, pro, well, probably a lot, well, definitely longer than I did. My dad was in the force as well. So the, I managed to get a few games in prior to um, actually joining, which was, which was uh, interesting. Uh, at, a, at a younger age, um, and I think, and I think back in the day, then it was it was very physical. Um, but I think rugby was in general, wasn't it? It's a much different uh, beast now than it was back in the day, um, and it, and it's cleaned its act up quite a lot, which is which is great uh, for many reasons, obviously, um, and so, certainly great when I'm trying to introduce the game to schools and what have you that that it isn't the violent sport that people think it is. Um, but uh, I think, yeah, put. Police in police sport is still physical. Um, there's still uh, a lot of pride and um, a lot of will to win. Certainly against your home nation countries, uh, and and a lot of um, shall we say friendly rivalry. Um, but uh, but ultimately that's what it is. So you know after the game the rugby rallies are all there, um, and we're all generally can be found um, 
out in the streets, uh, in the in the pubs of Cardiff, whatever, if we're playing Wales or uh, Belfast, we've been Dublin and uh, and we're and generally all together really. So um, yeah, the spirit's still there, but the game is still yeah still still very physical. Yeah, especially myself from from Yorkshire. I, I run the Yorkshire team, and we like to pride ourselves on on the physicality that uh, you know how we play the rugby, how we play our rugby. Yeah, amazing. Um, well, talking of that rugby and the job that you do, I had a, uh, I've had a police officer on the show before. He's a assistant referee in the Premiership, Mister Phil Waters, and he said that actually oh, yeah. his job was not a good influence on him being a referee because he got quite confrontational at times. Would you say your job is a benefit to you as a rugby player? Uh, yeah, I think it can be. Yeah, um, you know, you've got the. Uh reasonable force shall we say <laughs> that we use while we're while we're at work um and obviously uh, you can transfer that in, into rugby as well i suppose um you you, know, you you suppose that's it that's the only thing really um but but the, but the game you, you know not to go overboard with things um i know phil well and um obviously i he, he was the, the coach while i was just coming to the tail end of my england career um so yeah that, that's uh that's something probably Phil would say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although then, now I want to hear a little bit more about the nights out that you mentioned after these games, because another great thing about this is that the people don't know each other that well in the in these teams, and certainly with the opposition as well. So I've always found like there's a real kind of electricity on these nights out where you, where you're really sort of getting to know each other. Was that your experience as well? Yeah, yeah, it can be. Obviously. Um sometimes the lads have got something else booked in so they, they do their own thing but yeah generally we'll we'll, we'll uh, bump into each other while we're out and about uh, you know after the game and um, yeah it's a, it's, a, it's a common factor that you've got isn't it obviously there's a rugby straight away and then there's the, the work environment that you work in and sometimes there's a bit of a chat about you know different um, policies and principles and what have you that you might have from different areas so that that's always good but yeah, the, the common grounds of rugby, isn't it? And you, you, it's just like any other rugby rugby club. You know, you you, you pick pick your opposite number. You have a chat. You have a beer. Um, chew the fat about the game. Um, you know, um, technically carry each other or praise each other, whatever. And uh, yeah, but it's, yeah, it's, it's just good to um, it's good to let loose with like minded people, isn't it? I suppose. Yeah, it definitely is. Definitely is. Okay, let's move on to the coaching, Dave, because I know you coach a whole range of different people different ages different standards all this kind of stuff what 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 i want to know is what drives you as a coach to go out there and and put the training boots on and and encourage these people to get into their rugby some more yeah um i knew this question would come in and um do you know what i'm not i'm not sure i'm not really sure what it is um i think it's partly a love of the game i think it's um i think it's partly uh having received so much from the game um, that I want to give a bit back, uh, just a little tiny bit, really, and then open the game up to, you no, know, because of I've, because of the uh, successes and not well, not the successes, but the um, the good times I've had through the game, um, just to really show that off to to, to others, really, and 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 to, so certainly to to kids, you know, to sort of introduce it to them. Um, I know I think we've said before, um, obviously where where I live in Sheffield, um, it's a very a football dominated area um, and certainly was for me growing up as a lad um, and I was useless at football um, to literally two left feet uh, all my mate, all my mates my close mates weren't they weren't useless they were very good and some went on to play uh, you know professional football and football at a high level um, and, and I suppose I realised very quickly uh, prompted by my father that um, weren't very good at football um, so <laughs> need to look at something else but obviously I was brought up for, with rugby anyway dad's Welsh Brought up with the uh, the great Welsh teams from the seventies, uh, and all those sort of names were drip fed into me as I was, I was brought up, really. So, um, uh, very quickly turned to rugby and um, and picked it up at secondary school myself um, through so what sort of age sort of eleven years old really, uh, and through the passion of a, of a teacher there, um, Mr Jackson from uh, my uh, he's a CDT teacher back in the day. Um, I don't think do they have that anymore. I don't know. Craft design technology, I think it was, wasn't it? I don't know. They probably don't do that anymore. Um, but uh, yeah, and again, somebody who inspired me to carry, to, you know, to pick to pick up and carry on and playing rugby and pursue it as a, um, you know, as a, as a serious hobby, really, and and really get into it. And I suppose it's all it's all trying to emulate them them people really and and show people that you know rugby's got so much to offer, um, and it, it literally is the sport for all, isn't it? All shapes, sizes, abilities. 
um, ages, genders, uh, ev- you know, everything. Um, it's just a sport that that everybody can play, irrelevant of whether you've played it before or, or if you haven't. So I think that that's that's the other thing as well. Um, I, obviously, as you mentioned there, going to going to schools, coaching schools, um, which I really enjoy. And, and the big thing about that is 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 turning people's head to rugby uh, when when really the obsession is football. So you go into a school and and straight away you're, you're up against it. Everyone's got a football shirt on, which is all fair, all fair. You know, no issues with that. Um, big football sport myself, Sheffield Wednesday, um, the way forward. Um, and many would say not, but uh, I'm sure it is. Um, but uh, yeah, so and he's just trying to convert them, and just some some lads aren't, aren't built for football, are they? Um, and I think probably at the time I wasn't when I was a kid. And then you're showing them an, an alternative, just an alternative. Um, just have a go at this, see what you think about this, and all of a sudden, it opens up a different a different uh, avenue and a, and a different sport and a different way to try and to keep fit as well and, and to play a bit of, and to, to play a bit of sport in general. Yeah, and are you are some of these kids are, are they seeing rugby for the first time when you're delivering it to them? Tell me a bit about that, Dave. Tell me a bit about the challenges that are involved in that. And do you get some kids that are just like, "No, I'm not doing it," and sort of stand aside? Yeah, yeah tell me a bit more. No, about yeah, that. yeah, we do, we do, definitely do. So I don't really know what what image it, it's portrayed. It's interesting actually, because obviously having been a rugby convert all my life, but basically. Um, it's interesting what image is, is portrayed to the kids and to the kids' parents as well. And I suppose you, you're fighting against that, really, um, as you're trying to introduce it to, to the kids in the schools. Um, generally, the um, sports teachers, so the schools themselves are, well, not generally always, they're all fully on board, really want to promote rugby, um, talk quite positively about the game, and, and, and they know what the positive positive attributes of the game um, c- can be brought forward to some of the kids in the schools. Um, yeah, but the, the kids that look like it's an eight, like you get, you get the rugby ball out and it's like it's a, uh, an, a, some sort of an alien or something, you know, they've never seen, some of them have never, never really carried one before. Um, so yeah, it's interesting really. I, I noticed it more so when I was doing like school fairs and fates and what have you. And um You'd have you'd have the football lads would walk past and they'd be like looking at you and and I'd and I'd go oh, do you want to have a go at this then and they'd go not really no it's not football and I said no yeah and I chuck a ball at them uh, and then before you know it they'd be like so what I've got to do then oh you've got to run round that jog jog jump over that dive onto that um, score a try run back as fast as you can what dive onto that yeah 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 you can dive onto that oh brilliant <laughs> they'd absolutely love it and and they they all won over you know kids are kids aren't they, they just want to chuck themselves around don't they and have a good time. Um, you know, so it's quite easy to com- to convert to convert them really, um, and then you give them the flyer, obviously, and they go back to the parents and say, "Oh, this is quite good rugby." Oh, that same day that you do your football training, so so that's what I'm saying when you're up against it, really, with a with a football um, in the area. Um, so, but no, it's it's an interesting challenge, um, and I've learned now maybe to maybe to look obviously the the, the natural. Um, Sport, sporty kids, if you like, the kids that have got that natural ability uh, have generally migrated towards football uh, with the skill levels and whatever that they've got, the fitness levels, the skill levels. They've been doing it again since they were probably, you know, since they were born, really. So um, you generally find that they're they're already embedded into football and they're not going to transfer across generally. Um, but then there's a lot of kids, like I said, that don't maybe fit the the form of of um, a football player uh, who, who will quite easily then take to rugby. Um, and you know, and then they're getting stuck in straight away immediately. But um, yeah, and especially I think as well, it's something that I've picked up of the Olympics while watching that. The sevens rugby is just taking off massively, isn't it? And I just think that that could be great to introduce to the schools the tempo of it um, now that it's in the uh, in the limelight as well. And I think that could probably propel a lot more interest in rugby, certainly in the local area and uh, via the things that I'll be doing. That's a really interesting point. Have you noticed any sort of increase in interest in rugby over the last couple of weeks uh, because of the Olympics, um, you know, on the ground? Um, maybe not over the last couple of weeks, but I, I think um, certainly people talking about it more. Um, sure, maybe the practical practicalities of it, people coming down, maybe not so much, but um, certainly the conversations, you know, it's people who, who I'm having conversations with at work and what have you that I, I would never thought I would, I would be having about rugby. 
uh, oh, did you see that? Did you see this? And no, oh, this hand's under Ponce, all right. You know, it's been around for <laughs> quite a while, actually. You know, so, um, but obviously, it's things like that, isn't it, that propels the game forward, really. Um, so, yeah, yes, a lot of interest, yeah. Interesting. OK, so we'll, we've looked at your kind of coaching in the schools, you know, kids that are literally just catching a ball for the first time. And then you coach all the way up to much more sort of higher levels where players are much more uh, used to playing, all that kind of stuff. Tell me about the challenges of switching between one sort of mode and the other one. Yeah, I suppose it isn't it isn't that challenging, in all fairness. And that sounds a bit daft because you are looking at the two extremes. You've got people that are... Um, you know, you've got lads, kids, um, girls that are coming coming into the game that have never touched the rugby ball before, and then and then you know a few hours later, and then coaching people that um, you know have played all their life and have played to a very high standard, or almost semi professional. Some some of these lads as well, certainly through the policing sections and what have you. Um, and and I find actually that I can use the same drills, the same routines, the same the same sort of training sessions, but just tweak them slightly. Um, you know, obviously um, reducing the time periods, the space, the uh, the increasing the tempo, and just little things like that. But almost the same similar drills, um, and and obviously with the lads and the lasses that are are, are better players, um, there's not the there's not the great you, you you're looking at the finer detail of of the of the session really then. Um, so yeah, it's it's probably easier to coach them them people, those players, than it is the um, the kids, really. Sometimes with the kids, it's like herding cats, isn't it? <laughs> um, just wanna, and that's a good thing about rugby as well, that, you know, kids generally just want to run around. So rugby's great for that. You're going to be running around um, and you're going to be burning a lot of energy. Uh, so, yeah, just the differences in the sessions aren't as, as different as you would imagine. Yeah. Now, listen, I know you've done, um, you're a level three coach, is that right? Yeah, last year. Um, oh, okay. So really yeah. recent. That's interesting. Talk, talk to me about yeah. the whole process because it takes a whole year, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. Um, in fairness, I think the um, sort of standard qualification is a, is a year now as well. Um, just sort of drawn out across the whole year. Uh, when I did that, that was the so I did the old level one and the and then the old level two and then the old level three. But I think it's just the the one um, England coaching qualification and then there's the uh, advance so there's just a two now but uh, yeah it, it was a lot more um, in all fairness I probably didn't realise what I got into um, I'd certainly not been doing any studying for some years and then found myself doing homework and studying after after <laughs> after training and stuff like that so the pressure was on um, you know purely for myself uh, but I, but I, de- I had a decent uh, mentor uh, who went through it all with me uh, and supported me throughout it and obviously the RFU uh, support support you fully on that. There's nobody doing that that doesn't want to do it. So um, they've got a captivated audience, which is which is great. Um, but yeah, thoroughly enjoyed it, and more more so than anything, it just opened my eyes to what the club provides. I think what your club provides to the community, um, and they talk about um, sort of layers and structures around your club and what support you've got uh, and who you're utilising for support. Um, you know, whether it be coaches or other other organisations within the community, um, all, all all stuff that you would probably wouldn't normally think of when you're a rugby coach. Really, um, I think the first sort of the levels, what the old level ones and twos are the are the core of the coaching. Really, for, from what I from what I found. So the level so, three is yeah. almost more of a, a more of a management kind of side of things. Um, yeah, no, they do they do do a separate management course, don't they? I think in a. Um, director rugby sort of course as well but um yeah that, that's how i sort of saw it there, obviously there is the, the coaching side of things and how you're putting things across and how you're layering stuff up and building up your your sessions and, and linking them into um you know what what you're trying to achieve for that session and building up but um yeah that's what i think that's more so what i took away from it the the actual um how you how it, yeah the management side of it really how you fit in the community how you uh, who you work who you work alongside how you can recruit and just things like that really yeah oh interesting okay it's going to be a slightly left field question but is there anything that you do in coaching now that is different to that you've done or really believed in previously have you sort of had a, any kind of big swings or changes um maybe uh maybe I'm trying to think actually more more games more game orientated sort of training really for everyone so obviously for the kids they just want to play games all the time 
Um, so it's trying to incorporate your um, isolated skills really, but in a, in a game environment. Um, so yeah, so so more for more so for the kids, and then trying to bring that in then to the seniors as well. So yeah, just I suppose that that aspect is is the main sort of one really. Just um, play more more games as opposed to you know well not I would say structured sessions, but um, you know the isolated training that you probably did in uh, nineteen eighty six or uh, back in the day. And many years afterwards, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, what are the benefits? What do you see the benefits being in doing it that way? Um, the sessions go quicker for one. Um, the kids and the kids are the, ki- the kids are more entertained. Uh, if it's a kids session, um, they buy into it much more. Uh, you can coach uh, everyone in one session as opposed to um, working on you know individuals. You, you're involving everyone in one session. Don't get me wrong; there's still the the um, time required for specific training obviously and specific skill sets obviously that need working on um i'm still a believer in that but um i think if you can incorporate if you know if you're enjoying it then you don't really realize that a you're working hard and b you're probably learning and you're learning you're learning more in one game activity than you would be in the isolated sessions really yeah yeah cool okay let's move on to this trip to africa that you've been on Tell me all about it. Who was it with? Where did you go? What was the premise? Let's uh, let's get into it. Yeah. So, um, well, first off, uh, amazing, really. I, I knew it would be good. Um, you know, is a is a is England Police Rugby uh, tour uh, for twenty twenty four, which was to Cape Town, the Western Province, South Africa. Um, it couldn't have been bad, in all fairness, because that's where we were going and. Um, we're like a club ourselves anyway, so everyone gets on. There's a good good camaraderie between everyone. Um, so, yeah, it was never going to be bad, but I didn't realise it'd, it'd be as good as it was. Uh, so, I personally, I've been to, I have had the, the uh, I've been fortunate to go to Australia, where I spent six months uh, as a kid, 19 year old. Uh, I've been to Australia, uh, sorry, I've been to New Zealand, uh, went to the uh, Lions test there uh, with my father, which, which was amazing. Uh, and then the, obviously South Africa came up, and it was an opportunity I couldn't miss really, just to do the, the get the uh, the Holy Trinity in of the Southern Hemisphere rugby nations. Um, t- truly a special place, in all fairness. You know the scenery. We take rugby out of it. We got the scenery, the amazing wine, the food, massive steaks, uh, incredible really. Uh, and then you obviously you had you had the rugby in, and the rugby mad. At the, the, and you obviously been. I think you've been. You've said you went yeah. um, yeah. rugby mad location. Um, Sport mad in all fairness, and and it was incredible. And um, we were welcomed everywhere we went. Um, we had the the safety brief before we went, and saw nothing in all fairness, no no issues whatsoever. Um, looked after wherever we went, you know, got involved with the local rugby club, which is Hamilton Rugby Club. Got looked after there, uh, and then I think we had the sort of idea that when we when we're going on tour. We have an opportunity here to maybe leave a bit of a, a footprint, a bit of an England police, uh, for want of a better word, maybe a bit of a legacy, a little bit of a, um, you know, what can we what can we actually do for you? We're here, uh, we want to get involved. Um, so through through some contacts that I had um, from back home, some um, some lads that had come across from South Africa to work at the local private school, um, they they managed to corral them and they played for my local team uh, bless them got man a match every game they were probably a few levels better than than, than my local team but um, uh, yeah we managed to uh, blend them in nicely um, so kept contact with them and um, one of them was from the, one of the townships over there um, uh, and managed to hook up with them uh, with with a view to obviously just running a couple of sessions there uh, we'd already donated some kits a few years back to them so we took some kit over quite a lot Um Oxen, our kit, kit provider for my local club, they provided a boatload of uh, a kit. To be fair, which was amazing from them. Um, we took and so just took that over and uh, and and really embedded ourselves within the communities. Really, uh, the lad, the contact that I've just mentioned there for, for his, from his club, he was also, he's also employed at one of the local private schools. So literally saw the uh, the the top and 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 the bottom of. Um, the rugby sections, if you like, within their societies. So uh, we went to the private school and saw how uh, intense their games are, um, and then and then went uh, across to the townships and saw equally that the games were as intense and 
the skill levels were literally just through the roof. Um, gobsmacked by what I, what I saw, really. Um, every player wanting to be uh, Colby. Um, <laughs> every, every, everyone's got, even the big boys had a sidestep. Um, but uh, yeah, just immense. And the love for the game really was, um, was struck us immediately uh, when, from, from getting there. But yeah, it was it was truly a special occasion. Really, we whilst I was over there, we had a bit of a chaperone, and um, he was looking after us. Uh, and he 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 was part of obviously a club as well over there, and 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 said would I go down and coach a session down there as well. So we squeezed in another club, which was sort of like a you know mid range really. If we're talking about the private schools and then the local township, so this was pretty much a mid range club, if you like, uh, with it within the community. And again, a great experience. Um, I turned up there. Potentially looking to do a ten-minute session and up doing a uh, an hour and a half session with uh, seventy-five lots of seventy-five blokes of all different ages and and there are actually some lasses in there as well. So and they're all mixing in. There was no separate. There was no separation of um, ages or or, or or sexes. It was just uh, one big session. So that was a bit of an eye opener as well. But um, but yeah, you, yeah, just a special time really that I'll I'll never forget. In fairness, um, you know, for many reasons, but. Um, yeah, the coaching side. So while 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 obviously the lads were um, having a bit of downtime, I'd then go off and do a bit of coaching. So when obviously when we had the games and what have you, I would be, be there, you know, with the lads to to um, sort sort the stuff out, the kits and stuff for the for the lads there. But when when we had a bit of downtime, that's when I'd go off and do a bit of coaching, um, and, and loved it. Yeah, I just loved every minute of it really. That's amazing in in loads of ways. It's amazing that it was a personal connection that made you sort of go or sort of inspired you to go and do that and I love the fact that you just went and did it on your own as well like it, I thought it was going to be like everybody was sort of going out there and doing it but it was just yourself who got up and and, and went and you know really tried to just just make contact really yeah and, and it, you make it probably make it sound a bit more more special than it was really <laughs> I mean it, it was um it was just just personally you know for the experiences that that I uh wanted to have as well um, but also um, it was an opportunity it was an opportunity to uh, again give a bit back um, go to a different country uh, see my mate again obviously make make new mates um, and just spread the rugby word the rugby family's um, global isn't it uh, you see it every time every time you go to uh, on a tour or, or what have you um, you just accept it aren't you you know you're welcomed in straight away immediately you've got well and you know from from that um, the the club there, you've got eighty mates straight away um, that all want to go and get you a beer after after the session. Um, bit too many beers, I ate, but, um, <laughs> took a few back with us. <laughs> but uh, but yeah yeah, and it, we we on the when we went into the townships, um, there was a couple of us went there. Um, so yeah, we which was which was good because the numbers were quite high again. So it was good to split to split the groups in in ages there. But um, yeah, and I think from that sort of the ourselves as the England section we sort of realised that there's an opportunity to do this every time um, and it's no hardship by any stretch you know it's actually a pleasure to do it and we'll, we'll probably try and do that even even when we're going to the home nations as well um, try and identify a local school or, what, or whatever just to do just to do you know even if it's just an hour but just just to give a bit back really to the, the local communities um, and it's interesting it's something different isn't it the schools won't have had that before um, so nice yeah it's nice to get involved in that way really yeah, I think it's really enriching on both sides for that. Now, I think plenty of people listening would probably be able to imagine roughly what the school was like, what the club was like, but maybe not the township. So tell me a bit more about that. Tell me a bit more about the kids, what they were like, what their lives were like through the window that you saw it. Yeah, so um, again, like I said, we had, we'd had the safety brief um, about where, you, you know, what, what transport, where you should be going, where you shouldn't be going. And uh, we pretty much ran roughshod over that when we went into the townships. Um, we, we breached everything, I think. Um, but but we never ever felt, um, you know, vulnerable in any way or under threat in, in any way at all. So we got picked up by um, my mate in, in his in his mate's taxi, and then he took us over. It was about um, half an hour drive or so. And then when we got there, the pitches were in like a compound area, almost like a school sort of playing field area. And I'm pretty sure they backed onto a school actually. Um, so the, the gates were, it was all secured. The gates were open and we went in. Um, so straight away we're, we're in the, we're in rugby pitches and you know, rugby, all rugby pitches are the same all over the world, isn't it? Once, once you're on there, you're playing rugby and that, you know, and that's it. So the, the kids turned up, they were, 
you know, hyper. They they were they loved it. There's somebody different coming to the club um, to run a session as well, and they were straight into it, straight into the game, straight into playing, straight into running around. And like I say, the skill levels were just immense. You know, from kids from six years old all the way up to sort of like you know the Colts, seventeen, eighteen. They were passing off after the after width of the pitch. Um, you know, walk, walking around on their hands, um, <laughs> walking honestly the the width of the pitch on their hands, warming up and. It, it was uh, it was incredible, really, to see, um, and I think instantly I just thought, well, what what can I add here? What can I do? Um, you know, what what sort of session am I gonna am I, am I gonna run run here? I had I had sessions in my mind that we that I, that I thought I could run, um, but then when you see skills like that, you think, well, he's not. You know, I I can't I can't even do that. <laughs> I've never never seen a lot of the stuff that they're doing there before. So I, you know, um, and I think what hit me straight away was. And I've had this this discussion with my dad afterwards. To be fair, because my dad came across, he he would come out to the, he was my chaperone really on these sort of coaching trips. He'd chat to the elders on the side, and I'd go on with coaching. Um, but um, I, I think it was a structure element, really. Um, probably just to bring a bit of structure into the game. And then afterwards, uh, my dad said, "Well, why why did you do that?" And I thought. Why did I do that? Actually, to be fair, why? why, why let's just have three throwing rugby from the first minute to the to the eightieth minute and just chuck the ball around. Um, and we watched them play actually a competitive game while we we're over there. Um, and funnily enough, it was against the private school that I'd been to. So it was a township team that I'd coached against the private school that I'd been to, and uh, it was my mate running both teams. And he said, "I can't run both teams, so would you coach the township team?" And I'm like, "Every day, yeah, definitely. What an experience!" So. And we actually beat them, which was amazing. We, we, we turned, yeah, we turned the uh, turned the private school over, which was amazing. Yeah, but um, yeah, I, I said to him during that game at the start, I says, right, listen, um, let's just try and build a few things up. No, let's not try and, you know, we don't want to try and go around them every time and get isolated, you know, um, out, out on the on the wings and what have you. And um, they didn't listen. <laughs> they just chucked it around. They just chucked it around for eight to minutes. And then a couple of times at half time, we said, are we going to go for any phases? Or and they went, yeah, we'll try. And they, I think they, they, they kicked off the second half, caught the ball two phases, and that was it for 40 minutes. So, <laughs> um, but what, yeah, what, I mean, again, that was a, an amazing experience, really. Um, but yeah, the, the love for the game over there is is immense, you know, through, through all the communities. They, they're just uh, so passionate about it. Um, and and it just shine it, sh- it shone through um, at every at every level at every club level. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And if people listening to this ever get the opportunity to go and do that, what what would you say to them, Dave? Must go, must go. Uh, it is a must. Um, like I say, even if it's even if it's not for the rugby, obviously, if it's just to visit the the the, the city and the country. I've got friends. Um, uh, obviously, that over here that play that play for my club, the South African uh, lads, and um, one of them's just gone back to Durban now, actually. And um, and he he said to me, I knew I knew, and I knew you'd like it. Uh, it's it's your sort of place, and and it really was. Um, I'm open. I'm hoping to take the family back over maybe December time for the uh, the sevens. Um, got some contacts over there. It'd be a shame not to use them, wouldn't it? Really, but hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that, that's that's. I think that's the overriding feeling is if you if it's somewhere you want to go back to, it can't be a bad place, can it? Yeah, definitely. Okay, that is an amazing way to end that part of the show, Dave. Let's move on to the stash section. So we're going to start with the awful kit. Is there any kits out there at the moment that you think are just disgusting? Uh, I don't know. I don't know about out there at the moment. I once bought the Stade Francais uh, shirt. Uh, with the lightning stripes down and some roses on it as well, I think. I think that got wore once at uh, a training session and um, ridiculed that much. It never come out again. Wow. <laughs> that, that wasn't a good one, to be fair. It's amazing. Bought it and then hated it. That's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. What about favourite kit of all team, all time? So this can be any team from any era. Yeah, it's for me. It's got to be the um, ninety-seven Lion shirt um, for me. That's when I. Um, really fell in love with rugby. Really, I've been watching it for some years, obviously before. Um, but uh, yeah, the '97 Lions shirt. I wanted wanted to buy one, missed the boat, didn't buy one, and then they're about five hundred quid now, aren't they? So I'm, I'm probably never going to get one of them. I'm yeah, it's got to be that one. It's so iconic, and so many memories watching that. Um, yeah, 
yeah, it's got to be that one. Yeah, special, special jersey. Right then, but my favourite one about the stash is a favourite bit of stash you've ever received. So this could have been gifted to you, or you might have earned it somehow. What's your favourite bit of stash received? Yeah, pr- probably, yeah, probably a little bit of both gifting, and I'd like to think earned it a bit. So um, we went uh, the last big tour that uh, England Police went on was Hong Kong. Uh, or the last one for me, sorry, they've been to Canada between South Africa and Hong Kong. But Hong Kong was the last one for me. I think that was 2019. Um, and whilst we were over there, we um, played against Australia and New Zealand. Um, it was just on the back of COVID. Uh, so, obviously, some I think they had some some riot problems over there as well at the time. Um, so, we, we were. I think there should have been some more na- uh, nations going over there, but it turned out just to be uh, Australia and New Zealand. So, it was like a tri-nation sort of comp, really which was actually incredible. Um, and during that, I managed to get into the squad that uh, played against New Zealand, uh, got on for the last sort of five minutes or so, which uh, my missus thinks is comical. <laughs> Went all that way and got five minutes worth of rugby. Um, and uh, But they, obviously facing the hacker, uh, tremendous experience. And then uh, randomly got Pally with the uh, the captain who led the hacker. Uh, so afterwards we had a few beers and like, like we just discussed the rugby the rugby uh, the rugby family um and it, and he presented me with a, a south canterbury shirt uh, which is probably my favorite shirt in all fairness it's a bit baggy so it fits quite nicely <laughs> so i've got got room got room to grow in that one <laughs> but um yes yeah so that that's probably my favorite stash to be fair uh, me, means a bit to me um you're quite unique i don't think anybody else got one of them um so yeah yeah that, i'd go with that one yeah, I don't even know what that looks like, Dave. Tell me, talk, talk to me about the colours and the design and stuff. Uh, bl- black and dark green hoops. Um, oh. Yeah, and uh, quite a good idea actually. That, that uh, I want to, I want to pursue for my club actually. It's got all the sponsors down the middle at the back, so it's probably got about twenty sponsors down the back. So a bit of a sponsor shirt, you know, in all fairness, which is a good idea, I think. Um, but yeah, yeah. So it's uh, it's black and black and green hoops. Very nice, very nice. And the story behind it often is is the, the real killer part of these things. Okay, yeah. mate, we bring this to a close. Is there kind of anything else you want to say, any kind of messages you want to leave the audience with? No, I don't think so, uh, other than uh, get involved, really. Um, that's a big thing, isn't it? Um, yeah, You know, with everything that's happening at the moment with the sevens and what have you, um, and, and, and put a bit back, I think that's what I would say. Just even if it's a little bit, so... We try and make at my club. We we try and get every uh, you know the senior sort of players to um, to to get into coaching and to coach the junior team. So I think virtually every junior team at my club's got a senior coach. Um, and and even if you're just going for half an hour every week or half an hour once a month, you just put a bit back. I think and the the sport will uh, bloom and grow rapidly on the back of that. I believe. Um, yeah. Get involved, really. That's the main thing, isn't it? Good, strong message. I like that. And if people want to get a hold of you to talk about anything that sort of come up today or anything else, how would they best do that? Yeah, uh, through the Mos- through the rugby club. So my rugby club is Mosba Rugby Club. Um, so you are easily contactable through that. Um, uh, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, Twitter, what have you. Um, so yeah, that'd probably be the best way, I would think. Uh, all my details are, uh, are on that or. Um, yeah, that'd be, the, that'd be the easiest way, I think. Perfect. And people listening at home, I'll link everything that Dave just mentioned there in the show notes down below, and it will, can find it also at amateurrugbypodcast.com. So it just leaves me to say, Dave, thanks so much for your time today. It's been a really fun chat. Cheers. Thanks for having me. I've, uh, I've enjoyed it, actually. It's been interesting. Something very different, uh, but it's been interesting, yeah. Thank you very much. Amazing. You're very welcome. Okay, there he goes. Some great stories there, and I just want to reiterate the Africa thing. If you get a chance, more than that, maybe try and seek out an opportunity to get over there and get into the townships and the kids and stuff over there because it is just a phenomenal experience. Dave shared, you know, his thoughts there and and I just back those up completely. I've done a bit of that myself. Now, if you've enjoyed this podcast, you can do all the social media stuff, the liking, the sharing, all that stuff, but definitely get over to YouTube where there's a ton of extra content. Make sure you hit subscribe there. But what I'd really like is if you mention it to someone in person the next time you're down your local rugby club. So until then, get out and play.